What's up ladies and gents, this is Casey Kid coming at you with another Destiny video. Today we're going after the Black Spindle. I realize I probably should have done this video before the week started, but here is how to go and get the Black Spindle solo. Now I'm on my Warlock, my Stormcaller, I feel that's probably one of the best classes to go ahead and grab solo, but I want to show you one thing. Now this was my first run, I thought I was just going to jump in and be able to do it the first time, but whenever I went in on my first run I was just going through all the methods like I normally do, not dying, and whenever I got up to the gate it was closing. So that's not good, so I was like wait a second, what in the world is going on, did something change in this mission, did something change? But I found out that there is a little bit of an extra secret that you kind of need to do, it's not so much a secret as it is, well you have to be fast. Basically, you can't stop and shoot and deal with any of the enemies leading up to here. It's just going to close it. You've got a time limit. Now before, it was more about everybody staying alive and be fast. We never had the gate close, but now apparently you've just got to book it. So I'm going to go through the entire run. You go to Lost to Light, you pick it right from the mission on the moon, you pick Heroic Mode, and you load in. Now we are going to speed up the really just basic running around parts and we're just going to go towards the important parts but I want to show you that we're going through the entire run so as you can see in this run I learned my lesson I just booked it I didn't stop I didn't shoot any enemies at all and I did this two times back to back just to make sure and whenever I ran it and I didn't fight any enemies at all there was no problem the gates were open and I was able to finish the secret ending part of the quest that gives you the black spindle. Of course, I can't pick up the black spindle because I already have it, but you would be able to. So I'm just showing you, you need to actually kill this ogre. For me, what I did was I emptied my entire auto rifle clip, I threw a grenade, and then the found verdict, once I used its entire clip, the enemy was dead, or at least what's dead for the story mission, and that is it. It's pretty easy. Now one thing that I did right here was, I just took the time to go ahead and make sure my heavy ammo was maxed. You're going to want to have a sword, preferably the Dark Drinker, and of course Radagast's Artifact. You want to carry as much sword ammo as possible, so I've got 88, that is good. Now if you don't have the Dark Drinker, Ray's Lighter probably would work, but the other two exotic swords are simply too weak or their mechanics don't work correctly. So Dark Drinker, my number one recommendation, Ray's Lighter would be a second just if you don't happen to have the Dark Drinker, but of course we're coming up on Wrath of the Machine Raid. So chances are most of you already have the Dark Tricker because that is Axis's bane. Now I just want to say that before we had done a video a long time ago on 3-manning this and that's basically a part of the strategy that I'm using. It's all about the sword and just melting down the boss at the end. Now I'm showing these areas because you do have to pick up these relics and throw them in the doors and then you could go ahead and continue on your run. But I'm really not wasting a ton of time in here. I just grab that relic immediately. I threw it in the doorway and I'm moving on to the next one. Now this is the area where you might die. This is probably the trickiest area just because there's so many enemies in here. So don't feel bad about taking just a few seconds to deal with those enemies because if you die you're going to have to wipe and start it over. I find that this is a good time to go and use my super. I take down that witch and then I can just take out some of these enemies right here in the middle just so that they're not shooting me. But overall I'm trying to get down here and grab this second relic to open up the door. This knight, I'm just going to take him down. Don't feel bad about using your sword. We're going to say that again as we get into the catch, but using your sword is going to be a big, big deal. Once we've got down most of those enemies in this room, it's pretty easy opening up the second gate, and then what we're going to see is that the doorway will open. We're going to continue on our normal path, except for we're obviously not going to finish the mission like they want. We're going to continue going straight, and right here you can see the doorway is indeed open. And like I said, I did this back to back times and the door was open both times whenever I just ran through the entire mission. So once you're here, you can actually breathe a sigh of relief. You've done it right. You're in the right area. But what I actually did was I found that this is a really good spot to just stop. Regain your heavy ammo synth cooldown. Regain your super before you run into the next area. Before you jump onto that teleporter. So I waited. My super got charged up. My heavy ammo should be charged up. And I'm just ready to go. In here... Now you've got a time limit. Now you've got basically 10 minutes to clear out all of the taken on the catch. So what we want to do is we want to take down blights and enemies as fast as possible. If you're not on a storm caller, having a sniper rifle is probably a good thing because you can go and take down those blights really quickly with that. 
since I'm basically all close quarters, I just took it down eventually with my auto rifle, but I do a lot of taking down of blights with my super. Right here, I'm really focused on that, and then whenever my super runs out, I just bolt out, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the sword, and I just need to take down the enemies. Don't waste time shooting enemies with other weapons, unless it's a full auto shotgun. Take down enemies with your swords as fast as possible. We basically cleared out that room in roughly 30 seconds, and we're going to move on to the next area. Here there's going to be enemies that spawn out from both sides. Again, the Dark Drinker is so good here because one swing I'm able to take down all those enemies, assuming that they come out of their little invincible area, which these two didn't, and that area is complete. Moving on to the next one. Now I know as soon as I come down these steps, there's a Blight right in front of me. In this room, there are two main priorities. One is obviously the Blights, and two is the Wizards. Again, Dark Drinker works really well for the Wizards because they've got a Void Shield, so they go down in one spin. But I'm using my Super again right here because I want to take down those Blights. I got one of the Wizards down. I'm going to put in some Pot Shots here with this Super, but I know I've got another Blight over here that I want to get down immediately. So unfortunately, I missed with that first swing, and the second one didn't hit. I need a spin in order to take down those blights. Now what I'm doing is chasing down the wizards. I know I've got two wizards up somewhere, and I just can't walk up those steps. <laughs> you can jump over buildings, you can't walk up a little ramp. This wizard is unfortunately running away, which is a pain in the butt. All he's doing is wasting time, but don't worry. You're going to have plenty of time to deal with this. You do not have to kill those shadows as far as the taking counts go, so I don't worry about them at all. Now all the wizards are dead. So what I need to do is I need to get up and deal with those snipers. But before that, there are these stupid take it on the ground. Again, just using the sword. Swipe through all those enemies. Don't waste your time shooting. There's no reason to shoot the enemies. Just swipe at them. I'm coming up to this guy. He's all by himself. One spin, he goes down. And now we have three snipers over there that are just pelting me. Just absolutely pelting me. And you can see we're just running on the red health bar right now. But we got the one down, again, one spin, second guy is down, I'm just like, please don't kill me right here, don't kill me, another spin, and he is done. So we get to move on to our final area, we still have seven and a half minutes to go, so we're making really good, really nice time, and again, this is why I like to have my full auto shotgun, because right here, everything is in close, obviously, if you've got your sword, that is completely fine to use right here. In fact, I end up making a little bit of a mistake, just coming up in a few moments. So what I would like to say is after you clear out these two knights, give yourself your sword and pop a heavy ammo synth. I should have, I didn't. I'm going to pay for it a little bit in just a few moments. So whenever we do our three man strategy, we have a titan, we have a hunter, and we've got a warlock. And what we do is we jump right to the middle platform, we take out our swords, we pop our bubble, and we kill the boss immediately. Since I'm solo, I just want to deal with some of those blights right away. So I went in and I killed all of them. I know I have limited sword ammo, like I said, unfortunately I didn't pop my heavy ammo synth and I'm paying for it because I want to get these enemies down as fast as possible and eventually I'm just like forget it, I've just got to pop my sword and unfortunately I do not have enough sword ammo to deal with the boss, to deal with Drivix right now, I don't. Normally I could just melt him down and he will get absolutely melted with the Dark Drinker. You won't have any problems, but I didn't pop my synth before so you should learn from my mistake and I have to go off, back off, and now pop a heavy ammo synth. And while I'm doing that, new blights are popping in, and the room is getting repopulated, and Drivix is still alive. So unfortunately, what I want to do is I want to take care of some of those blights while Drivix is still up. And that is not a great idea, because he is a huge, huge pain in the butt, and I basically get killed. Though it's not a problem at all. In this area, the battle isn't over. You can still go and continue, you just have to wait. So basically your punishment is losing time off of that time gate that you got, that 10 minutes that you have. But after just waiting for a few seconds, we get to respawn in. And I just wanted to show you that so you don't have to worry. If you die here, you're still fine. I'm going to rectify my mistake and I am absolutely going to take out Trivix. Like I said, taking him down immediately is so nice because he's not throwing those huge orbs at you. He's not just absolutely pelting and destroying you. It's just nice to get him down. And after that, it's again back to the Blights. Take these Blights out as soon as possible. I pop my Super again. I use my Super for the Blights. And of course, it's nice that it chains to all the other enemies, but killing the Blights is the number one thing why I use it. And of course, we've got another one here. One spin from the Dark Drinker. That goes down. And we're just, again, rushing through the enemies, trying to kill the Blights, because the quicker you kill the Blights, 
means the less enemies that are all around. And of course, you've got those enemies that like to multiply. Right here, I do get killed a second time. That's the second and final time that we get killed. And I believe that is perfectly fine and acceptable as well. Because we only have one blight. We only have one blight up and to the left of where we are. So I feel really good about our situation right now. And as long as you're basically clearing out enemies like this, you should have no problem. In fact, I am not sweating it at all. And apparently these enemies don't care either because they're just sitting on a knee. They don't give a crap that I'm running around, so just sword them. Why the heck not? This is my final Blight. We do one spin for that enemy, another one for the Blight, and that is it as far as the Blights go. Now all we need to do is take care of the rest of the enemies that are in the arena. Again, you can see that we're pretty much using our sword the entire time. A sword is just so strong. Throwing out a grenade up there, it's just hitting enemies, chaining, killing some of those enemies over there. We've got 11 sword ammo. That should be enough. We're going to spin on this guy, and we're going to spin again. And there we go. I know that we've got one more spin, but we also almost have our super up. So I'm just backing off a little bit, regaining my health. My super's up, and this should pretty much do it. Pop our super and just chain on all of these enemies that are left right around here. They can try multiplying. We're going to kill them. That's the last one, and that is it. With about four minutes left, and easily four minutes if I didn't die those two times, Four minutes left, we did it solo. Black Spindle would indeed be mine if I didn't have it already, but I do have it and I just wanted to show you that it's not that bad. This mission is not that bad anymore, especially since we've got 400 light, 400 light health, 400 light abilities, 400 light weapons. You can do this. If you don't have the Black Spindle, pick up that Lost to Light mission, put it on Heroic, and feel free to go in by yourself, or if not, Pick up a friend, pick up two friends, it's only going to make your life easier. This mission is certainly doable. We talked about needing a black spindle for Golgoroth. You can go and grab it. Anyway, guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. Check out these awesome videos. Good luck with your raids, your drops, your spindle, and I'll see you around in Destiny. Hashtag Heavy Ammo Synth and Dark Trigger.